Hey there, comic colleagues and superhero supporters. Did you know that Spider-Man once sued J. Jonah Jameson for over $300 million and won? Technically? Well, if you didn't know, let me tell you about it. This captivating court case appears in She-Hulk Volume 2, Issue 4, written by Dan Slott. In this issue, we follow She-Hulk as she assists her co-worker and friend, Puglies, in his quest to repay Spider-Man for saving his life. Now you may be asking, how could Puglies possibly repay the spectacular Spider-Man? Well, by helping him sue J. Jonah Jameson for libel. After J.J. has issued his papers, we are thrown right into the court case. We see that the first witness to take the stand is none other than astronaut and editor-in-chief's son, John Jameson. While on the stand, J.J. Jr. gives testimony of a time when he was piloting a space capsule that lost its guidance packet. His capsule was on a collision course with Earth and would have crashed if it weren't for Spider-Man installing a replacement guidance packet. We learn from Pug that J.J. Sr. then ran a front-page story accusing Spider-Man of sabotaging the launch although there was no evidence of foul play in NASA's later investigation of the capsule. From there, we are shown a string of witnesses, giving testimony of J. Jonah Jameson's shady dealings. Some of these tactics include trying to strong-arm the police into arresting Spider-Man, usually claiming that he is another masked villain, pinning crimes on Spider-Man to sell papers, and also using over half of his business's budget to spread anti-Spidey propaganda in the form of billboards. Spider-Man himself then takes the stand, giving us the real reason as to why J. Jonah Jameson constantly targets him. And that, my friend, is because Spider-Man is black. <gasps> okay, okay, it all ends up being just a joke, but I still really like J. Jonah Jameson's reaction here because he just looks utterly and completely guilty. Er, uh, I, I, I didn't know. I, I mean, I, I have nothing against, I, 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 I would never. Uh, the, the, some of my best friends are, oh, uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Like, I mean, he probably should have said anything else other than that. But anyways, the defense then begins to question Spider-Man and reveals that not only does the web head harass J. Jonah Jameson frequently, but also that he is linked to the death of Captain George Stacy and Gwen Stacy, making him a dangerous vigilante. This silences the wall crawler for a moment. However, before the defense can truly get the upper hand, they are interrupted by the appearance of Scorpion, who aims to crash the trial and destroy both Spider-Man and J. Jonah Jameson. Spider-Man and She-Hulk go to stop Scorpion, leaving J.J. to take the stand. While on the stand, Pug grills the money-hungry businessman by connecting him to the creation of various supervillains, such as the Scorpion, the Fly, and the Spider-Slayers, as well as pointing out supervillains that are either in or close to his circle of colleagues, such as Frederick Foswell, who was the big man, Jacob Conover, who was the Rose, Tombstone, a childhood friend of J.J.'s right-hand man, Robbie Robertson, and finally, Dr. Otto Octavius, Peter Parker's almost uncle through marriage. Pug then announces that maybe J. Jonah Jameson himself is a menace that creates supervillains, ending his questioning and ending the first day of trial. On the second day of trial, Peter Parker is brought onto the stand as a witness. Unbeknowing of Spider-Man's secret identity, Pug accuses Peter of faking photos of Spider-Man. He then claims that Peter even dresses up as Spider-Man on occasion in order to stage photos. Peter's responses weaken his credibility substantially, and once his back is against the wall, Pug declares that he will also be including Peter to the libel suit. Due to Peter being Spider-Man and vice versa, he decides that it would be better to settle this matter outside of court. In the outside of court meeting, Spider-Man states that he is willing to drop all monetary charges and forego all future claims on the condition that both Jameson and Peter hand out public apologies for an entire business day in chicken costumes. At first, Jameson protests, but once he learns that Spider-Man can easily win over 300 million if the hearing proceeds, he quickly changes his tune. The issue ends with Peter and Jameson, feathered in semi-good spirits, passing out flyers on the streets of New York. Well, there you have it, folks. Spider-Man sues J. Jonah Jameson and wins. Technically. Honestly, I think this is the best resolution for Spider-Man. A moral win is more impactful and lighthearted, which speaks to the character of Spider-Man himself. And also, I mean, if he would have won, it's not like they could make out a check for Spider-Man or anything like that. So, yeah, I think, I think this was the best way to take it. But anyways, thank you for checking out the video, and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more comic coverage, give this video a like, comment, and or subscribe for more.